And Stefan is so anxious to get down the hill, he just pushes whoever it is out of the way. Am I warm? I don't know. I, I suppose it's possible. As I said, I wasn't there. Well, the only alternative is that he shoved the kid off the cliff on purpose. Never. Okay. So, what is it about this egg that makes him so anxious to get it home? I mean, what? what is it? it it's, it's an ornate chicken dropping, Barbara. And it's so important to him that whoever's in his way is going to get tossed. Even the crown prince. What's so important about that egg? Think, Barbara Jean. Think. Your two minutes are up. Luke? The phone didn't even ring. No? Well, I guess we're still in sync. Baby, I've got some big news for you. Well, so do I, but it's not good. Luke, it's Nicholas. I think he's in danger. I need a moment together. Not now, Luke. Really, I am up to my eyeballs and alligators. Thank you. This is about Nicholas. What about him? Well, I was hoping you could tell me. Has he come back yet? Uh, no, sir. But uh, something's happened at the hospital. Mrs. Cassadine rushed over there just a little while ago, and, and the newspapers have been calling here looking Look, for you. Look, I don't care what's happening at the hospital. I have to find Nicholas. You stay close. Oh, yes, sir. What did you say to Nicholas? Don't play games with me. I put a trace on his cell phone. I know he called you earlier. Yes, what about it? Now he's missing. Missing? Just tell me what was said. What did you say to him? All right, all right, calm down and listen to me. Yes, he did call, and he was very, very upset, but he wouldn't tell me what it was about. I mean, I'm just as concerned as you are. What happened? Did the two of you have a fight or something? If he calls you again, you're to contact me immediately. I need to speak to him. Here. Nicholas. What is it? Is he there? Where have you been? I just came back to get my passport and say goodbye to you and Bobby. I think I owe you that much. Where will you go? I, I, I don't know where I'm going to go. But it's going to be as far away from you and your, and your lies as possible. Nicholas, I admit, I should have told you the truth. Uh, about which part? Huh? About which part? The part where you, where, you, where you shot and paralyzed an innocent woman or the part where you're going to let Luke Spencer go to jail for it? Which part? I'm not proud of what I did. I really want to believe that. Nicholas, 
I can understand you distrusting me. But please, never doubt that I love you. I've heard that a hundred times before. Maybe it's true, maybe it isn't, but I'm still leaving. I know that you're disillusioned. I understand that perhaps you do need to get away to find your balance and your peace. I, I can accept that. No, oh, well, in that case, then we're done. Nicholas! Nicholas! What about Catherine? What about her? She needs you. I am sorry I didn't get back to you. Been... Where is he? Why do you want to know? My wife thinks he's going to do something stupid. As much as I don't care, she does. So where is he? I have no idea. Do you think my wife might be right? I honestly don't know. May I be dismissed now? If I hear anything, I'll make sure I call you. Sure you will. I'll hold my breath. How's Audrey? The last I heard, she was still in surgery. Doesn't look good. I can't find him. He just showed up at Windermere. How do you know? Stefan just called me. Imagine that. Anyway, I think Nicholas walked in and he just hung up on me. Well, good. Sounds like maybe Stefan's spool is unraveling. Maybe we can get uh, Bobby to push him over the edge. I love you, baby. I'll talk to you later. I'm worried about Catherine. It's a little late, isn't it? Nicholas, she respects you. You'll never know how much she cares for you. When you were missing, she, she was terribly upset. Well, I'll be sure and let her know that I'm all right. Now that she and I have agreed that we can't see each other, I can't help her. But you can. You know how much progress she made when you were teaching her Tai Chi. You'd do anything! You'd do or say anything to make me stay, wouldn't you? <laughs> you were the one. You were the one who put her in that wheelchair. And now you want me to feel guilty. Nicholas. Just do this thing for Catherine. And I promise you, I won't attempt to come near you or influence you in any way. For Catherine. Hello. Where are you? At Windermere with Nicholas. Is he all right? Yes, yes, he's fine. Oh, thank God. Would you like to speak to him? Well, there isn't time. The whole hospital is in total chaos. I need you here right away. I'm on my way. What's wrong? That was Catherine. She said there's an emergency at the hospital. I'm coming to. She. Uh, she's still unresponsive. What are you doing here? Laura asked me to check on her. Audrey's good people. 
She's always been more than fair with me. I like her. Yeah. I'm not worried about her. I know. Oh. <laughs> you seem happy. Lulu just gave me the biggest hug and kiss and said, I love you, Gummy. <laughs> She's the cutest baby in... What? What's wrong? I, um... Something happened at the hospital, and, uh... Audrey's been hurt. Oh, no. Oh, no. Is okay. she... It's okay. It's okay. It's, it, they're doing everything they can, and it's way too soon to know for sure. It's okay. You see? We don't realize how... Precious our lives are. And now everything can change so suddenly. Laura, I want you to go home to poor Charles, to your family, to all of your family. Luke and the baby and Lucky and Nicholas. I don't see how that can ever happen, given how Luke feels about Nicholas. Well, there just has to be a way for them to make peace with each other. It's more complicated than you think. How so? I'll tell you about it one day. But you're right about one thing. I waited way too long to get this whole thing straightened out. Monica? Okay. How is Audrey? Oh, she's still unconscious. Will she recover? I certainly hope so. Hey. How are you feeling? Better now that I know that you're all right. Sweetheart, in an excruciating nutshell, my next move. As always, any questions or comments are welcome. Are you having second thoughts? Why do you ask? I don't know. It was just something in your voice. Well, uh, about Stefan, no, no second thoughts. Not even a sliver of doubt. But about Bobby, I don't know, you know? But until I reshuffle the deck, this is the only card I've got to play with her, especially after what went down with Tony. Well, then you've got to play it. Yeah, I know. I'd sure rather be there, sitting on some alp, yodeling. Yeah, well, yodeling won't be the first thing we do when we finally see each other again. Oh, you sweet talker. I can live with that. Yeah. Luke, just remember that you are doing this for Bobby and that you love her and you know her better than anybody else in the world. So trust your instincts. Right. No second thoughts, no doubts. All systems go. Dr. Alvaro, I need you to come over right away. It's important. <laughs> well, couldn't you just... Thanks, Ruth. Big time. So let's review what we've already covered. GH is dealing with the aftermath of a hostage situation resulting in one arrest, one death, and one beloved pillar of the medical community wounded and illegally operated on, and still in critical condition. While a hotshot young surgeon who recently initiated and won a sexual harassment lawsuit against the head of cardiology winds up in jail on drug charges, is later released and files a restraining order against the son of that same noted heart surgeon, who also happens to be the chief of staff's wife. Have I left anything out? I hope not. So, can you handle it? Yes. I'm getting pretty good at putting a positive spin on even the most hopeless of situations. Even turning them to my advantage at times. 
Oh. Good morning, Nicholas. Am I interrupting something? No, no, not at all. Catherine and I were working. What brings you here? I work here, remember? Yes, I remember. I checked your PT schedule and you're doing the gym in a few minutes. I thought I would go with you, but if you still got work to do, I'll... No, no, no. Uh, we're finished for now. I meant what I said. It isn't hopeless. Well, you have my full support to do what you do best. Let me know what you come up with. Are you ready? Yes. Goodbye. Well, she had a physical therapy appointment. Nicholas stopped by to escort her. So is he better? Well, he still has very little to say to me, but at least he's not leaving. Was that a possibility? Yes, it was. When he found out I shot Catherine. Ruby? Look, where's Ruby? Is she all right? She called. Ruby's fine. I don't believe this. Ruby, shame on you. I'd do anything to keep the two of you in the same ballpark. Oh, well, you know, I'm leaving. Hey, Barbara, please don't do that. Please. I swear if you listen to me one last time, you'll never have to listen again. I swear. Mm. Please. Mm. What's new? Uh, we can start with Oliver. I know most of the exercises and routines. I'd rather discuss what just happened with your uncle. It's pretty obvious, Catherine. I'd like to hear it from you. All right. He disgusts me. The only reason I'm still here in poor Charles is you. <laughs> he didn't hesitate for a minute to try and use you to get me to stay, Catherine. He's lucky I'm willing to be in the same room with him. The way you're behaving, I think that you should consider yourself lucky that he hasn't thrown you out on your adolescent bratty butt. Okay, okay. So what, what is about this time? Lucas, Tony, my marriage? Make it snappy. A stupid Fabergé egg that Stefan cracked my skull to get his clammy paws on. Don't you think it's curious? That, I mean, that he would get so freaked out over a gaudy ornamental bauble. Well, you know, it is a family treasure. It has great sentimental value. And Nicholas just gave it away. To the enemy. I know. I cast an iron treasure in the hands of the enemy. The worst part is the head of the household knew nothing about it. And the enemy had the damn thing long enough for an ignorant slob like me to figure out its secret. Secret? Luke, what are you talking about? Barbara, the egg opens. Inside is a computer chip that is sort of like a virus, for lack of a more precise word. It's designed to override security access codes and gain entry into mainframe computer systems. No, I don't think we have to guess what he's going to do with that, do we? Uh, a computer virus in a Fabergé egg. Okay. Well, you know, Luke, you've come up with some real tall stories in your time, but this is good. This is really one of your best. Freeze I gotta go. Freezing the world. Sounded like a tall story, Barbara, but you were here wearing snowshoes in July. All right. If Stefan did have something that important, why would he make it so easy to get to? It wasn't easy. I had to get help from a friend at the WSB. But once we... Whoa, 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 okay. So that's the part I'm a little fuzzy on. All right, look, yeah. one day I'm sitting around, I'm tossing that damn thing up and down like a baseball, and I'm thinking real strong about pitching it against the nearest wall. I guess I was peeved. And I noticed these three notches in the base that happened to be just the right size to stick in one of those little cheesy medallions that they all wear. So that's how I found out how it opened. Now, once I found the computer chip, we copied it. 
And then we made Stefan think that he had the original when he whacked me over the head and ran down that mountain path in Switzerland. And, 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 you, do you think I would make this up? Yeah. Well, okay, yeah, I would, but I, I wouldn't have proof. Mm, okay, so is this where you pull out a microchip and you tell me it's a copy of the one that's going to run the world? If I trusted you, I could, Barbara, because I have the copy. Something is going to go down, and it's going to have to do with computer shutdown, maybe even a global computer shutdown. Why? Why would Stefan do this? Give me a motive. Give me a reason. Besides the sheer power? Think of the possibilities. He can hold entire nations hostage. We could be talking worldwide computer terrorism. Yeah. Wow, well, okay. I gotta go. Oh, just leave your mind open, okay? I mean, you know, proof doesn't always lay itself out in neat little rows. Sometimes you have to connect the dots yourself. Yeah, then stop trying to do it for me. You make me so crazy. You know, the only reason that you're still with Stefan is hurt feelings and and stubborn pride. That's it, Barbara. And now you're going to try and put up this front of a perfect American family so some judge somewhere will, will, will keep you on top in the Lucas sweepstakes? And what are you going to win, huh? Maybe the kid can grow up in the big lie like Nicholas. Hold it, okay? Trust me. You do not want to tangle with me when it comes to those custody papers. Now, if you think you've got this all figured out and if you think you really do know why I'm sticking by my husband, then why are you telling me this? How do you know I'm not going to go running to him? Good question. I got a really good answer, too. You want to hear it? As the situation is under control, it's not ideal, but it's controlled. Define controlled. Nicholas is not leaving for parts unknown. He's staying here to lend his support to Catherine. And he used to say his support doesn't include giving her assailant up to the police. He wouldn't. Of course, he's angry now. That's understandable. But he'll... He'll come around eventually. Don't you think? Oh, you don't want to know what I think. Let's talk about business. As you know, I am a very neat, very organized person. And loose ends, dangling threads, they make me very, very uneasy. So... I suggest that we drop the dry runs on guinea pigs like Felicia, and if you want to get serious, do it. Now, this intern terrorist who took the hostages, he was able to pull it off because he infected the GH computer. So if you want to introduce your virus into the hospital mainframe, you might as well do it now. You're very astute, Alexis. You've just described my intentions precisely. I played you wrong from the beginning. You never should have played me at all. Barbara, I know now. When I came to tell you that we were going to fake Laura's death, you beat me to the punch by telling me you'd married Stefan, and I went into a tailspin. I'm sorry. I didn't trust your judgment. I... Well... Now look where we are. Sure. You can go home and you can blab to Count Vlad that big bad Bubba's got his secret bug. But I bet you he uses it anyway. It's too late to abandon his plans at this stage. Barbara, this is his chance, you see. This is his chance to get back at all the wrongs done to him. All those imagined crimes against his family that he thinks people like me have committed. This is his version of the big freeze, baby sister. I think it's going to be a big anticlimax for you when nothing happens. Something will happen. I already hung up my tights and my cape, you know. I'm not interested in saving the world. I already did that. And guess what? The world didn't change. It won't. But my family is in that world. And I have to protect them. And like it or not, my family includes Ruby and you and Lucas.
Uh, I have to go. An emergency at the hospital. Barbara. Do what you think is right. to the whole story. Did she believe you? She tried her damnedest not to, but something... something's got to ring a bell and all that. Even if she does go and tell Stefan, you know, I'm banking on that he's gonna feel squeezed to use the virus anyway. And then she's gonna get smacked with the truth on one end or the other. So will Nicholas. He's a tough kid, Laura. Don't worry about him. What we need to focus on right now is what's next for us. I agree. This is the perfect time to implant and engage the virus. Fine. As for Nicholas, he may rebel a bit to prove his independence. But he will not turn his back on me. Or the family. I can't believe you're taking his side after what he did to you. And I can't believe you're turning on him after everything he's done for you. It's for him. All of it. Without him, it would have no meaning. Your uncle fought to give you an amazing legacy. When he could have grabbed it for himself. And what, I'm supposed to be uh, grateful, obedient? No one asked me if this amazing legacy is something I want. What if Nicholas doesn't want the keys to this precious kingdom and you're pushing it on him only makes him more angry and more rebellious and then he'll retaliate by telling everything he knows about Catherine's shooting. Now, that is not impossible. And I do know how much he loves you, but how can you be so sure that he's going to do what you want him to do? I have to believe in him. In his strength. His loyalty. If I'm wrong, then none of it matters anyway. Have you ever told your uncle you don't want it? For all your protests, you're perfectly willing to let Stefan devote his life to you. And you certainly have enjoyed the perks of being the Cassidyne heir, haven't you? It was before I knew who he really is, Catherine, and what he's capable of, but none of that means anything now. You don't mean that, Stefan. Oh, yes, I do. I fought Helena for that boy's soul from the day he was born. If I hadn't done it, nobody else would have. He would have been hers, he would have been lost. I have never for one moment regretted it or resented him. He is the heir. He is the future I have given up everything to secure. I was ready to leave for good. Go somewhere, a anywhere where I could be anonymous. But you stayed here because of me. Out of pity. No, no, Catherine, of course not. I hate my uncle for what he did to you on our island and, and for what he did to me in Switzerland. They were both accidents. He was aiming at a tree. I walked into his sights. How do you know everything he's done since isn't just to keep you quiet? For a while, I suspected that. But I got over it. The man that you're describing could have suffocated me in my sleep. He could have pushed my wheelchair down the stairs. At the, the very least, he could, have, he could have threatened retaliation if I gave him away. Instead, he did everything he could to help me walk again. That sounds pretty darn ruthless to me. I guess I'm just not as generous and forgiving as you are. I knew you and liked you before he did. You don't really know me. You have this idealized vision of this person that you want me to be. I'm not a saint, Nicholas. And I'm sure that there are plenty of upstanding citizens and poor Charles that would say that I got exactly what I deserve. Yes, I have given up Catherine and more. But I don't intend to dwell on it. Now what? I will transfer the virus to a disk, activate it through my laptop. It will travel to the General Hospital mainframe and infect the entire system. You know what, all of a sudden I'm uh, feeling a little nervous. 
Well, I'd be surprised if you weren't. Why don't you uh, take a little break, get some fresh air, meet me back here in 30 minutes? I'll do that. took a walk and all I could think about was one of these summers that we spent together you know the summer when I was 16 years old and, and we took the wildest horses out of the stable and we just rode them into the hills do you remember that yes I remember we rode for hours and we didn't care where we were going we didn't even know where we were going it felt great and everything seemed possible where are you bringing this up now we don't have to go through with this, you know. It's not too late for you to change your mind. Yes, it is. must be faulty or degraded or caught in some endless sub-routine loop. Do you realize how many hard drives and how many terminals there are in this hospital? The virus has to copy itself to each one, load itself into memory. Have a little patience. Well, you know, I was thinking we should really be taking some more precautions here. I mean, wouldn't this be better if we did this at 4 o'clock in the morning? With half the stations shut down, how instructive would that be? And how would we explain our being here? learned anything? To teach him a lesson? To punish him? Is that what you want? Do you feel that the best way to do that is to pretend that everything you ever knew about him was a lie? That this uncle who loved you and raised you was really a two-headed monster? You've never talked down to me before, Catherine. Please don't start now. I'm not. It's just that I know this impulse very well. I have been from one extreme to the other trying to figure out what I think about Stefan. It doesn't work. Because he is the best and the worst of everything that we think he is. Most people are. Are you ready to wash your hands of him for that? Are you going to walk away from the one person who would do anything in the world for you? That is a lot to lose. Does anybody know anything about computers here? I used to call up the schedule command, and it worked the other day, and now the thing just goes blank. You, please. Hey, the clip is on. How do we look? I'm getting you some asymmetry with that, Dr. Jones. All right, well, if at first you don't succeed. What am I doing, Burns? Moving the clip. Why? Because you stopped the bleed, but the flow is still compromised. Well, <laughs> good. Meaning? Meaning, unless it's corrected, Mrs. Hardy could sustain unknown neurological damage. Right, but we're not going to let that happen, are we? Okay, and... Oh, the clip is on, I think. Ah, uh, okay. Don't panic, everybody. The backup lights will kick in just a second here. Uh, now what are we seeing? I, I have nothing. Nothing. Tony. Okay, will somebody find out what the hell's going on here? This is not supposed to happen. There's a whole fail-safe system that's supposed to keep this from happening. We can move Audrey to another OR. I'll come and dear one. Well, we can't move her. 
Everything's down all over the hospital. The lights, terminals, automatic doors. Okay, the mainframe has crashed. Why hasn't the emergency generator kicked in? Something is going to go down. And it's going to have to do with computer shutdown. Maybe even a global computer shutdown. All right, I need batteries, I need lights. I want you to find them. I don't care where. Tony, we can't finish this line. Do you have a better idea? Hang on, Audrey. Told us the software. You will have technicians yes. here within the, the hour. Mayor is bringing up two One moment, uh, please. and twelve phone lines for our city hall. Step on Cassidy. Higher evening staff here. That's what? security nurses, whatever it takes. Look, can't you override the controls? Right now. No, listen, Alexis. Tell them we need all off-duty personnel to report. Make that. All off-duty personnel. We need to ensure the safety of... No, it's, a, it's a backup generator. Are you telling me it can't work as a standalone? No, figure it out. I pay them over. All right, you will have a data recovery team here when? I'll be waiting. I said pay them overtime to anything. Just get them here right now. Do you have any idea what happened exactly? Well, there are so many protections built into a system like this, no mere malfunction could cause it to shut down completely. Our consultants suspect uh, a computer virus of some kind. From where? Who, who would do that? That disturbed young man, Greg Cooper. Apparently, he hacked his way into the system last week looking for information on the other interns. It's possible he also inserted codes tagged to activate after his rampage last night. Of course, that's just speculation. If you'll excuse me, I need to explain to the staff what's being done. Wait. No one seems to know much, Doctor. So what's your best guess for how, how soon we'll be up and running? There doesn't seem to be one. Did you tell Mr. Cassadine that we have a critical situation here? I spoke with the secretary. Mr. Cassadine is busy. Okay, well, it looks like we're on our own now. Uh, tell me, before the power went out, could you see if the asymmetry was resolving? Not conclusively. Uh, doctor, I didn't have enough time. I am flying blind here. I need to know if I close right now, am I going to leave her paralyzed? I'm sorry. I can't say. Tony, Tony, it's like you tell the interns, like you tell all of us. It just comes down to your best guess. That's all Audrey expects. I'm just not sure that's what I did, though. Move the light closer, please. Be with me right now, Nicholas, and whatever you have to say, I will make time to hear it. But at the moment, I, I just I just wanted to offer if, if if you thought it would help to tell the staff on pediatrics everything that you've been doing to solve the problem. People need to know that the hospital's in good hands. Well, thank you, Nicholas. I think it should be my job rallying the troops, but perhaps you can help in another way. You grew up with computers. What can you tell me about viruses? Uh, how extensive can I expect the damage to be? Um, well, that, that depends. That depends on whether the boot files were infected or whether the virus is program specific. Explain. Crisis seems to bring out the best in your cousin. Yeah. He has a way with the unexpected. Our backup generator should be operating shortly. Also, a data recovery team has just arrived to begin repairing our mainframe. What I've asked them to do first is to install a temporary network that will restore to your terminals at least the minimal functions you need for patient care. Any questions? Yeah, why don't you tell us what the hell happened here? Well, we don't have all the details yet, but it would appear that a computer virus was loaded by the intern who illegally accessed the system last week. We're still investigating, of course. But if anyone has any further information... Well, how about attempted murder charges since we almost lost Audrey Hardy in surgery? I had no idea. Alan, why wasn't I informed of this? Where did our chief of staff go? Where'd the whole family go? Yes, the, no, the cursor is in place. I, I followed your instructions. There's nothing yet. A few menus missing, but nothing critical. How long until the entire system is up? A 6 a.m. I can live with that. 
Yes, uh, we have elevators and exit lights back. Did somebody pick up the phone? Dial tone. Yes. All right. All right, yes? Uh-huh. How long? Very well. What about lights? Yeah, it's getting dark. Well, engineering is restoring full power circuit by circuit to isolate any potential problems. Should be a few minutes. Catastrophe avoided. Good job, Mr. Cassidy. I'll second that. Yes, could have been a lot worse. This hospital owes you a knock for the first time. I know I'm only a volunteer, but thanks. I wanted to make sure you were there. Barbara? Hello? I'll be right there. I had no idea how long Audrey's surgery would take in the dark without even the essential equipment. I heard you tell someone you'd be right there. Well, I had asked Ruby to pick up Lucas after school, and then um, I said he could stay for dinner. So now that it's dark, I think I should probably go pick him up and take him home. Of course. Uh, how is Audrey? Tony basically worked a miracle. Well, with your help, I'm sure. And thank goodness for that, I can imagine things could have gone badly for her. I have to go. Well, I imagine I'll be needed here for a while yet. He seemed to have worked things out very well. The staff deserves the credit. I wouldn't say that. Um, hi. Um, I just wanted to uh, thank you for the backup in surgery and all the moral support. Hey, you don't need to thank me. Can I trust the elevators now? So I'm told. trouble? Are you in trouble? Audrey Hardy. Sweet, loyal, tough as nails, Audrey. With a thousand friends and nobody to go home to anymore. Nobody to sit and hold her hand by the side of the bed. It's not going well. He could have left her paralyzed on one side. Or worse. The cops got the kid, right? What kid? Oh. Yeah. Yeah, he's probably going to take the blame for all of this. You never lie to me. Not about the really important things. When you found out about the daughter I gave up, you could have kept it to yourself. You could have let me go on hoping and wishing. A lot of people would have done that. But I had a right to know she was dead. However hard it was for you to tell me. Well, you're still my baby sister and I... I, I, I have an instinct not to tell you bad news. You know, like the old days, uh, the rent is due or the social services is on our tail. Bobby, did something happen? Oh, yeah, yeah, just like you said it would. Oh, everything went down, you know? Everything. Uh, like the phones, the elevators, the lights, the monitors. All of the emergency backup equipment. And there's Audrey lying on the table in the dark, and we didn't have any idea what we were doing to her. And then Stefan says, somehow a virus got into the system. That crazy intern, Greg, no doubt, but never fear, our 
CEO was there to save the day. You were right all along. There's a monster in the mansion. And I'm married to him. Are you leaving? I can't imagine why you'd need me for anything else. You seem to have this crisis under control. Could you wait just a moment? I have something I'd like you to take back to Windermere. All right. I left my laptop in the library. Ellen Quartermain is there too, by the way. For what reason? I think he was trying to explain it to me, but I couldn't quite figure it out. Great. You know, the view is amazing. I'm well aware. I couldn't find the patient's med schedules, and he took over and voila, here they are. I just showed her a little work around the force of the system to find them. You're all set, there you go. Thank you. Dr. Reinhardt, big portrait triage staff. Uh, I'll see that Catherine gets home. I know that you're going to have to be here for a while yet, so should I tell Mrs. Lansbury that we're going to be late for dinner? Well, I don't really know what Barbara's plans are. It's just me and you, then. Well, that would be nice. Yes. All right. Then, with this tangle of cables and batteries and telephone lines, they managed to hook our OR monitor up to a copy of its software in Rochester. And otherwise, I still not be able to know whether Roderick could walk or see or speak again when she woke up. This is one hell of a news story. I'm going to put quite a spin on it. Well, just don't put anybody's name in there, not mine, not Audrey's. The reason I'm telling you this is I want people to know that this was not a prank, that the person who did this could have cost a lot of lives. Could be restored as early as 3 a.m. Am I boring you, Alan? I've never thought of you as being particularly entertaining. Forgive me for thinking you might take some small interest in our state of affairs. You weren't here when I addressed the staff, nor was Monica. You see, you only think of this hospital as a collection of circuits. To me, if everything works, that's all I need to know. Now, if you'll excuse me, I have more important things to do. See you later. Stefan opened the cage and set his tiger loose in the hospital mainframe. Now, what the hell would he stand to gain by doing that? I don't know. You're asking the wrong person. If you hadn't warned me that something was going to happen, I'd be over there throwing rose petals at him, just like everybody else. You must think I'm such a fool. No, Barbara. I think he's good at what he does, and he played you like a ukulele. My eyes were open, at least in the beginning. Tony didn't want me, so, you know, I figured I had two options. I could go on being perky little Bobby, who takes her job too seriously, because she hasn't got a life, except for the son I'd be raising all alone. Or I could marry one of the richest, most powerful men in the world. Well, gee, <laughs> what a choice. I must have agonized for all of an hour and a half. I remember that night he proposed. He was covered in mud. He looked like something that had crawled up out of the earth. That was the night that Lucky fell or jumped into the swamp down by City Line Road. Or was pushed. I was angry with you. I was angry with Tony. And the fact that Lucky took a dive into a swamp over a computer game seemed like something only a son of yours could do. And this mud-covered man showed up at my door, begging me to believe that it wasn't his fault. And I remember thinking, why did he even care what I thought? Nobody else did. So I took him home, and while I was waiting for him to clean up, there was a ring. This ring. And a box, and it had a card, and it said, for Barbara. And I remember thinking, what is this? This is a hoax. What is he setting me up for? And that apparently is the last sane thought I ever had about Stefan Cassidy. Did he tell you that he loved you? Never. He didn't think that love and marriage mixed very well. Which at the time sounded very reasonable. I mean, Lord knows that combination hadn't been a charm for me. 
No. Instead, what he did was offer me everything I always thought I wanted. What do you do when somebody does that? Say you need time to inspect it? I guess I got what I deserved. But come to think of it, he didn't make that many promises. And the ones he made, he kept. He didn't promise not to lie every time he opened his mouth. And even Catherine. I don't think he slept with her. At least that's the technicality she tried to wriggle off on. Although I don't know what either one of them sees in the other. Oh, well, that's simple, baby. He shot her. And he needs her to shut up about it. Even Nicholas. You're as wrong about him as I was about Stefan, and that's your blind spot. We'll see. I was going to leave him, Luke. I really was. Then the thought of Tony hurling me into court over Lucas, and you on the witness stand, reciting everybody's favorite story, my sister, the teenage whore. I don't know that story. That would never happen. No. If it weren't you, it would have been someone else. It's like, no matter what I do, no matter how hard I try, I feel like all my life I'm walking around with a sign around my neck. Bobby Spencer, ex-hooker. Barbara, nobody thinks of you like that. Nobody. Don't kid yourself. Just one mention, and all of my layers of respectability suddenly become invisible. <sighs> At least Stefan Cassidyne, he wasn't invisible. Nobody would dare insult Mrs. Cassidyne, much less try to take her son away. What else did I need him for? I'm sorry, I didn't know this. I mean, I really didn't know, or I might have handled the whole thing differently. Why didn't you know? Somewhere along the line, you fell in love with him. <laughs> well, if you know me, say something nice to me and I'll wag my tail and never want to leave your side. <sighs> Whatever I felt for Stefan, went out with the lights in that operating room. I'm done. And whether he knows it or not, so is he. Helen, where are you going? I don't know why I have to keep reminding you, but we had a crisis here tonight. Now I expect all senior staff to remain in the building until every patient has been examined. Helen. Don't you worry about it. I'll uh, stop in and check in on him, okay? Dr. Brooks, this is the ICU staff. Dr. Brooks, this is the ICU staff. Stefan, do you have something that you want me to take home? I'll take good care of it. Mr. Cassadine. Dr. Strauss. Detective Garcia, Port Charles Police Department. Dr. Strauss, seven What can I do for you, Detective? Well, sir, I got some bad news for you. There's been an apparent homicide in the building. Now, we've sealed off the morgue and adjacent areas. We're also IDing anybody entering or exiting the hospital. Do we know who the victim was? Appears to be a member of your staff, Dr. Pierce Storman. <clears throat> Perhaps we should go somewhere and discuss this privately. Alexis? I'm not going to fall apart. I can't afford to. It's just been a long day. You want a brandy? <laughs> a cigar? I'll settle for a big brother. That you always got. No matter what. <sighs> you know how to stop him, don't you? Maybe. So what do you need me to do? Well, between us, Detective, Dr. Dorman was a despicable man. Now, that doesn't generally warrant capital punishment, but it would behoove you not to expect an outpouring of grief on his behalf. Thanks for the warning. I'll, uh, I'll be in touch. Very good. I'll stop by headquarters later to see what you've learned and drop off that file. Pleasure. Thank you. Any worse? Well, I don't know. Certainly draws the attention away from... True. 
I suspect you'll be getting a call from one or both of the doctors, Quartermain, either tonight or soon. I'm sure the police will get around to them sooner or later. Which one of them do you think did it? Or do you think Alan, like a good administrator, delegated the job? Myself? I'm a stickler for this innocent until proven guilty routine. I'm just funny that way. Well, nevertheless, this hospital has spent enough resources on those people. If you learn or even suspect that one of them did it, give them my thanks, my congratulations. And make sure we can hold it over their heads. I'll have someone bring you Dorman's records for the police before I go. And Alexis, check on Audrey Hardy for me. Ellen. Stefan. Listen, are you going to be here for a while? Monica's taking Emily home, and I need to go home to tell her about Dorman in person before the media starts baying. <laughs> all right, all right. Do what you must. I'll be here to field questions for a while. Security but are you sure Monica doesn't already know about Dr. Dorman? She would have found me to tell me. Uh -huh. Well, you know, Amy Vining mentioned that almost the entire Quartermain family was here tonight. Where did everybody go? How's Audrey? Uh, she's beginning to respond to painful stimuli. Oh, great. Well, that sounds like good news, is it? Oh, uh, well, it's always wait and see with these neurological injuries, but uh, I'm cautiously optimistic. Dr. Jones, I want you to know that I am profoundly grateful to you for your skill and dedication under extremely difficult circumstances. These past few days have been a trial by fire for the hospital. Well, I'm sure things will calm down, Stephanie. Well, I seriously doubt it, not with a murder investigation going on underfoot. A murder investigation? Well, yes. There was an apparent homicide in the hospital tonight. I thought... I thought you'd know because... your friend, Carly Roberts, was one of the people who discovered the body. Detective Garcia. Here's the file you requested on Dr. Dorman. Oh, great. Thank you. Have there been any developments in the case? Well, sir, I, I really can't give out the details of an ongoing investigation. Please understand, Detective, I'm not asking out of idle curiosity. I'm responsible for running General Hospital. Hmm. Now, Dr. Dorman was still officially on staff, and as you know, he met a violent end on the premises. And... What is your point, sir? My point is I'm deeply concerned about the future of the hospital. Frankly, Detective, I'm not sure we can survive another major crisis. It would be a shame to uh, see GH close. Yes, it would be a tragedy. But I won't relent. I will continue fighting with all the resources at my disposal. But it would be a thousand times more effective if the police and hospital administration could work together, exchange information. Well, sir, there's really not much to say yet. I mean, it's only been a few hours. Do you have a suspect? No one's been charged, but, uh... Yes, we do have a suspect. Jason Morgan. Sleeping at her post. You didn't have to wait. Actually, I did. Uh, any new developments on the Dorman murder? Well, they're holding Jason Morgan. Alan Quartermain's lost. Yeah, son. I know who he is. You really think he did it? Well, they're questioning him. You know, it might be a good idea if you called on the family tomorrow, offered your assistance. I will. If, if charges are filed, he might just be making a statement. Actually, it might be better if it turns out he's guilty. The more quickly this thing is resolved, the less disruption there'll be around here. Yeah, well, maybe I'll explain that to him and he'll be obliged to confess. Mm. It's late. You're cranky. Why don't you go home and get some sleep? Actually, there's uh, another reason why I waited. We need to discuss Audrey Hardy. To what end? We made a calculated risk and it paid off. Well, Barely. It nearly cost the woman her life. I planned the tests at a time when there was a minimum load of critical patients, and there were no major surgeries scheduled that required the use of the computer. 
Now, what happened to Audrey Hardy could have just as easily happened at 3 a.m. If the computers had gone down at that hour the and the Cassidines... I get, the, I get the point. But I see you're still not satisfied. Now, what is it you need from me? Reassurance. I did everything I could not to endanger the welfare of patients, but with a project this complex, there are always risks. I thought you understood that. I need to know that you're as disturbed about what happened as I am. Alexis, if Tony Jones had been unable to operate without the computer and Audrey had suffered the consequences, I would feel tremendous guilt. In fact, I feel guilt now for everything she's been through. But guilt is not regret. It had to be done. I'm in sync with you on the big plan, but it's just the, the little bumps in the road that keep tripping me up and, and make me, yes, question what the hell we're doing. Alexis, you knew from the outset that people might get hurt in spite of our precautions, and you agreed that it was still worth it. Now have you changed your mind? I, I need to see in your eyes that you still have a conscience. Do you see it? I do. Good. I'll see you tomorrow. Stefan, uh, if you're looking for Mrs. Lansbury, it's her morning off. No, I called for you. You don't sound like yourself. Oh, uh, well, it's probably because I'm still reeling from...